So the term, you never look a gift horse in the mouth, is probably the best way to describe this hunt. A few months back, I got an invite to go hunt for red deer on a farm on the east coast of the North Island. Now, this type of hunting is not my favourite as I do prefer the challenge of the public land. However, it was an opportunity to catch up with a couple of mates that I hadn't hunted with before and obviously a chance to get some venue. Now I'm not too sure how things work in other parts of the world, but here in New Zealand, if you're going to someone's place for a hunt, you normally provide a koha, which is a gift, and the standard Kiwi currency for hunting is, you guessed it, a box of beers. With our alcoholic koha on board, it was a short stint up the state highway, then onto the unsealed road, heading into our hunting area. As you can see, the weather was packing in and this was going to prove to be a pain in the ass for the rest of the day. Wow! Here we are! What a fucking adventure that was coming in there! Boys are just dropping the bike off down there um, and popping up and we'll get the old, our fuddy squared away. <coughs> Looks pretty old school. <laughs> oh, 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 look at this. Old school to the max. Once upon a time, this was someone's oh, Mickey as home, eh, bro? Yeah, they, they, they're pride and joy, eh? Yeah. And here we are, us who are hunters in here. <laughs> yeah. This is pretty sad. I'm definitely not venturing into these rooms. Anyway, <clears throat> we'll be doing kitchen in here, sleeping in here. Yeah, bro. Time is one o'clock. We're just sitting here waiting for the weather to clear. But let me introduce to you two of the brothers. Uh, they are both Bobs. One's uh, old school Bob over here. This is Bronson. Say kia ora, brother. Kia ora. <laughs> and here's the new Bob, James Danvers. James is bow hunting. Bronson has got what cannons are you running to, uh, this weekend, bro? Uh, 284 is my main gun. Yeah. And then if we have a bomb up on goats, I'll bring the old 300 out, 300 wisdom. Oh, yeah, bro. Top caliber, brother. Top caliber. We'll kick back a cup of teas and um, hopefully wait for it to clear. And honestly, as soon as it clears, we weather gears on, we're away. Mm. Mm. Right, that's us off for a shot. You may notice I'm in a different camouflage pattern. That is the... Uh, New Zealand Army DPM of old days. This stuff is the gangster three layer Gore-Tex. What I'm really saying is I didn't want to roll around on dirty old farm paddocks in my beautiful uh, first light gear. So hence the reason I'm rocking the DPM Gore-Tex. Look higher or lower? But the streams high and dirty and the farm tracks saturated. It was going to be interesting to see how much use we were going to get out of the quad bike on this one. <laughs> Just a bit bloody dangerous to have us on the bike, so the bike's more about to <laughs> hopefully cut our gear back. Yeah. And just when things were looking up, that bloody weather closed in and things started to go a little bit south for us. Yeah, this is awesome. <laughs> So much for light shells. Yeah. Maybe we should have stayed in the fight air. We just sort of tucked him behind his mana because he's getting out of the rain. Hopefully it'll clear up. But... That doesn't look flash, does it? And well, that's the thing about hunting. You never know your luck. James pushed up the hill, popped his nose over a little knob, and well, what do you know? We've got some targets. He spotted a, about eight just in here popped over the top so we're going to have a look. Unfortunately, thanks to the rain, I wasn't able to get my big camera out and zoom right in on these full stacks which were just on the front of this hill at 330 metres. Anyway, it's time for Bronson and I to get tooled up, get down, pick a target and send some rounds down range.
Stand by. Oh, fuck, look more. Another one. No one looking at you. Oh, he's hit it. Fuck, look more. Another one. Another one. No one looking at you. Here you come. See the black. <laughs> Do the wind clear us from the old brother. I think that's the spill. Roger. Squeeze off fight yet, Roger. High fight all my rounds. <laughs> Recovery time. This one's going to be a hard one. Boys are popping back to grab the bike. I'm going to walk down. Uh, yeah, I think there were three 30 meters. Double hit a couple of them. Uh, they were dead on their feet, and I know I put uh, two more finishing shots into two of them. So good to be on the board in the shittiest of weather. Alrighty, number one. We hit four, all four of them. So that's the one I finished. Hey. Yep. Yeah. Smoked lungs. And there's another one. One more thing. On the good tucker, eh? So with the bike back, the plan was simple. Process these four deer and ferry each one back before it gets too dark. And that's the first deer off. Now, um, James was just telling me he hasn't done a lot of um, gutting, so I'll uh, do a bit of a do a tutorial on how to clean out the gut cavity, take the bum out, and take the front and back hocks off and head off. <laughs> Gonna leave that one for the morning. Bronson was saying it's a bit too treacherous to uh, take a deer out in the dark. The track's a bit chopped up, so leave him there till the morning. It's really cold, so it won't go off or anything. Plus, all the guts is out. Oh. Yeah, boat. We see you back home, mate. Yep. Great. YY Express home. And with that, we started our trudge home. Back to the house, hang our deer up, clean our gear, and get some dinner on. Here's the old rifle all wiped down, nice and dry. Thompson doing his bang stick. Uh, ooh, we had the patties tonight. Are those Vinny patties, bro? Yeah, bro. Oh, Roger. So, because uh, it's, uh, we tipped four, we left one out there. We're gonna go, because this is private land, um, we're gonna maybe go for a little spotlight up the road and maybe a thermal. I've got some night vision goggles. I've got a test drive as well, so I'll grab those out and have a bit of a play with them. But we'll have a bite to eat first and we'll make a plan for later on. With the fire cranking, a cold beer to wash down our delicious venison brioche burgers, it was time to check out James's hunting bow. Awesome bit of kit here. This is um, James's uh, Matthew's bow. Got the um, the Garmin sight on it. This is the laser sight. I'm just telling me how to use it. Pretty impressive, man. <coughs> that five thousand dollars worth of kit right there. Um, 
Got the mechanical broadheads. Hopefully tomorrow we might see the old bro um, knock something over with it. It's about nine o'clock and we're gonna head out for a little spotlight up the up the track. Maybe look for another handy deer. Uh, stand by and I'm gonna test drive these uh, night vision binoculars. See how we get on. Well, I'll cut to the chase. The farmer had left all the stock up the road and there was no deer to be seen. However, when we crossed the ford, we did spy something down there. And boys being boys, we just couldn't help ourselves. Oh, oh hell. Oh well, no luck there either. Might as well get out the night vision goggles and have a play. Now these MVGs were sent to me by a company called Dassoon. Unfortunately for us here in New Zealand, we can't use any night vision equipment in the public land, so this hunt is a good opportunity to see how they work. Pretty good. Go left, go left. Go left, come down, come down, come down, come down. Yeah, right there. Is that a cow? Yeah. yeah. I've got them bright ass in here, bro. Yeah. This is pretty deadly, man. So what do you reckon? I know the guys and I were quite impressed. I will do a review on these and post them to my channel at a later date. And that's enough nighttime antics. Roll on day two. Alrighty, rifle is no rounds up at the chambers, boys, and full mag on. Oh boy, bro. Oh, she's claggy, claggy as bugger. But uh, we're going to give her a nudge and try and get up and sit up in the dark and see what we can see. With our trusty steed chugging away in the background, it was time to mount up and make our way back up the hill. And by the look of that sunrise, looks like we're in for a good morning. So we're returning to the scene of the crime. Yesterday, just over the top of that ridge there, we got a, a whole heap of deer, uh, 400, 400 meters out. So we we'll never crack. I know you can't see them on my GoPro, but they're over. We'll put an arrow up right now. Standing in the middle. Can you see them? So as you pretty much figured out, we popped back over the hill, back into the same spot from yesterday and we spotted around 10 deer sitting around 480 meters. Now with the deer unaware of our presence, this was a good opportunity to get James on the rock to see if he couldn't tip one over as well. Stand by. Now I know you can't see these deer because I didn't film them with the big camera but I gave James the honour of picking his target which just happened to be a full broadside hind and I selected a spiker that was quartering away. You ready? Chamber just in case. And with that, we had another deer on the ground. I left Bronson there with that one while he waited for James on the bike, and I trundled back to the deer we shot the night before. 
Alrighty. Back to the scene of last night's crime. Is that over there? Yeah. So I'll just show you a couple of the animals we shot last night. Uh, one real interesting one. This one here. Look at that. How malformed that is. Good old stinky old spiker. He was all good, but look at that. Mate. With the deer from the night before and the one we shot in the morning strapped to the bike, we decided we'd head back to the fuddy and start processing our animals. Not before stopping off at the ford and checking a set line we put in last night. There you go. Nothing in the chamber. Sure, brother. There you go. And there. Woo! Successful morning, eh, boys? Yep, can't complain about yep. that. Can't complain about that. After a cup of coffee and a chocolate biscuit, it was time to get processing all that venison. And after a couple of hours of hardcore mahi, we were done. Now it's time to relax and maybe teach that bow hunter how to shoot a rifle. James hasn't actually shot a lot of animals with the rifle, a lot of bow hunting, but so Bronson's gonna chuck him on the 300 bosom down here. And uh, zip that goat, there's white, oh, plenty of goats on the flat over there. Just a couple hundred meters away, just to see how things go. Well, see how he goes. Stand by. What's that on your top of your face? <laughs> mm, just the angle bro. Because you're sort of like lying downhill a bit and uh, the rifle was facing up, that's when you sort of get the scope will come back down on an angle on you. Yeah. Did you feel it when it hit you? You did. Yeah. But you're cool back because you didn't say a word. <laughs> well, that's the sort of thing you never say never because it could have happened to any one of us. That, uh, yeah. Well, fast forward a couple of hours and it's time to head out for an afternoon shot. Ronson and I are heading out on the bike, while James left an hour earlier to bow hunt his way up to the top. There he is there. He's going to have a crack at those goats. Now this was going to be cool. Ronson and I are sitting up on a high point, and we were going to watch James stalking with his bow, and now some of these goats. Well that was interesting to watch, I could sense the frustration with that many bloody targets to shoot at, to pick one, but after he disappeared over the back of the hill, he got himself a goat. So as the afternoon wore on, the only deer we did see were on the neighbours. It kind of felt like we'd done our dash, like we've exhausted our resources, or shut up the area too much. It was getting pretty bloody cold, and well, we were thinking about a hot fire and a feed back at the fuddy. So we pulled the pin. Righty, righty, righty. Um, <clears throat> gonna do an outro now because um, I'm gonna gas away real early in the morning. I've got a few venison drop-offs back, back to Wellington, and I'm gonna um, take some of this meat actually off the big stag that I shot, and I'm gonna take it into a local butcher in Wellington, and go through the whole process of doing some small goods and uh, patties and sausages from a butcher's point of view. So for this trip, um, I'm just gonna ask the brothers uh, their takeaways and their thoughts on the trips. Uh, with our man, start with uh, James Sniper Danvers. Uh, yeah, it was all right. Fucking filled freezer. Got a few, saw a shitload. Yeah. Um, my shooting was shit. <laughs> <laughs> with the gun or the bow? <laughs> <laughs> um, oh yeah. yeah. We got nice eel. Yeah. Fuck. Your takeaways for the trick, my bro? 
Um, no, it's just this awesome trip, like the road seat. It's me to yep. be able to come to places like this and get access because it, it's not it's hard to come by. So yeah. When you get invited, you know, jump at it. And you can fill the freezer. Everyone else is freezer as well. Yeah, we did. And Stephanie certainly did that, eh, bro? Hey, yeah. The animals around, many birds. <laughs> like, yeah. um, um, any shout outs you want to do, bro? Oh, yeah, I got shout out to my two young fellas. Tiarihi and Tamato. Yeah, bro. Yeah. What about Mumsy? Yeah, I'm my wife, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's cool, bro. That's cool. No, no. Um, my first thanks goes to this fella here for the invite up here and my bro over here, uh, Ronson. Thanks for everything, bro. Um, yeah, good, good trip with these guys um, into a new place I've never hunted before. Good to tag some deer. But anyway, um, I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll catch you on the next one. You can put your secret that you're busy. That's the one, bro. Go. Yeah, yeah that's it. <laughs>